Hi, this is Russell Stanner from teachertrainingvideos.com. Uh, in October 2017, a new version of Snagit was released. It's called Snagit 2018. I'm a recommended trainer of Snagit and Camtasia from the TechSmith organization. I'm going to show you five great features in Snagit, and that's going to include a few of the new features that are available. So let's get straight into it. 2018 Snagit, five great features. Okay, so let's imagine, for example, that we want to create some learning material. We want to record a PowerPoint presentation and then share that to our students, perhaps for a distance learning course, a blended learning course for the flipped classroom, etc. Might be training in uh, business. I can simply open up Flip uh, cap Screen Capture, turn on the video. So we're going to work with Snagit Screen Capture Video Facility. Click on the Capture button and mark the area that I want to record. Simple as that and then I just click on the start button and begin to record. Now I can even use my webcam if I want to start by a quick introduction with my webcam, but I'm just going to click here straight into the recording. Hi, good morning everyone, and, and today we're doing some training on using Snagit. Snagit is one of the technologies that I most use in my teaching and learning, and I'm a recommended trainer for Snagit and for Camtasia. And now I've stopped the button, uh, stopped here, pause, jump to the next screen, and carry on my presentation. In this presentation today, I promise to cover all aspects of uh, Snagit. I'll give you time for questions. If I don't know the answer, I'll send it to you later. The whole session is going to be recorded, and there'll be a ch chance for some more training if you're interested. Press the Stop button. Move on to the next screen. Now, once I've finished, if I just click on the Stop here to end that recording, that video is actually immediately ready. Hi, good morning, everyone. And, and today simple as that and now what I can do is I could share that on the internet so I could click on share and I'm going to upload it onto YouTube but I could put it in my Google Drive I could put it in my Dropbox etc so I'm going to click on YouTube and this is what I love about working with this technology is just how simple it is for me to get my content up onto the internet so I'm going to say Russell's lecture straight away I can get and what I'll do just to speed this process up, I'm just going to use that as the description and use that as the tag as well. I'm going to choose URL and I'm going to make this unlisted so that other people can't find the video, only those people that have got the link. The great thing is that because I've chosen URL, when I upload this video, which up it goes really quickly and I can see it loading there, and you'll see now it's going to tell me that that video is ready. I'm going to click on get link down here in the right hand corner and that video is now already online. It's taken me literally seconds to make the recording and to upload it into YouTube and now to be able to make it available to my students and I'm going to show you how. So I'm simply going to open up and click on paste because remember they sent me the URL, they sent me the link and it will immediately bring me to that video there it is, Hi, good morning, already everyone. online. And today we're doing some training on using such a simple way uh, to get your videos up. And then obviously you realize that many of the videos that you see online, perhaps some of these ones here, have all been produced using screen capture, often with a combination of screen capture and real video. So let's take another scenario. Let's imagine, for example, that we wanted to talk over a series of pictures. I've got some maps here that I'm going to use. Again, I'm going to choose video capture. I'm going to click on the button. I'm going to mark the area that I want to talk around. It doesn't have to be full screen. It's always a good idea not to make it too big because obviously that makes the video bigger. And I'm just going to start to talk. I'll just do a really quick example. Uh, so what we can see on the map here is uh, Italy uh, and the Italy, uh, the capital of Italy is Rome and that's also where the Vatican City uh, is based. Uh, there are many famous places in uh, Italy. One of them, of course, is Venice here from the old Venetian Empire up here in the north of the country. Uh, this area here, and you can see that it was Milan, is very much the industrialized part of Italy. Blah, 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 blah. Do the recording. Press the stop button. Video is ready. I can just check it. Uh, what we can see on the map here. Okay, everything's fine. Then I can click here and just click on save as. And this time, instead of me uploading the video onto YouTube, I'm simply going to save that as an MP file. So let's just put Italy video 
and save that onto the desktop of my computer. Now if I quickly jump to my desktop, there I can see the video. I'm going to click on it, open it up, and you can see it will open onto the screen and the video is immediately ready to play back. So we're not only talking about producing video that we can upload onto, say, uh, YouTube or into our Google Drive or into our Dropbox, but we can actually produce the video, have it ready immediately, and then share it uh, via, say, Moodle or Edmodo by simply saving the video onto our computer and then uploading it into wherever we want to upload it to. Such a simple tool, such a quick way to make video content. What a lot of people don't realize is that Snagit does incredible image capture. And I'm going to show you an example. I've just searched for some images on the internet. I've made sure that I've searched for images that are labeled for reuse. I'm going to quickly grab an image. So I'll take, for example, this one here. I'm going to click on it. And I'm now going to open up Snagit. But this time, I'm going for image capture. I'm going to just capture that image. That size should be fine. Just quickly capture the image. It comes into the editing suite. Now, one of the things that's available in the editing suite, and there are lots of great features here, is that we can augment the quality of the picture. I'm going to click on More, and I'm going to come down to Step. And I'm going to make, uh, imagine that I'm going to produce some kind of, um, perhaps a vocabulary uh, site um, activity or something. So I'm going to click here and say, right, number one, that's flag. Number two, that's window. Uh, number three, that's chimney. Number four, that's tree. Uh, number five, that's veranda. Number six, that's door. Uh, number seven, that's drive. Uh, number eight, that's sky. That will do. I've just simply taken the picture and I've just added these kind of steps onto it. And I don't even need to save this. I simply click on copy all. The image is immediately ready. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Word. I've got Word open on the screen. I'm going to paste that image in and it comes in with all the things. And now what I'm going to do is just underneath it, I'm just going to write, uh, write the correct word. And then I'm going to choose number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven number eight I think we down so very quickly you can so you could do this with a graph with a picture you can augment the pictures and there's actually a lot of different ways that you can augment a picture if I quickly come back to the editing tool you've got arrows if you want to add arrows onto the screen you can add text onto the screen if you want to add some text and then write something uh, you know, you've got absolutely loads of things that you can do to augment the picture. So really useful if you want to take a picture, uh, particularly in education or in training context, and augment it and add information onto the screen. This is another brilliant example of what Snagit can do, and I'm going to do this from my website. So most image capture tools would not be able to capture the whole of this area. But if I click on Snagit and set it to scrolling window, and then you'll see that when I click on Capture now, it starts to kind of show me these arrows. I'm going to click this button here, and now it begins to actually scroll through the image. That's done automatically, and it produces the whole of the image and even the part that was not visible. It scrolls right through the image. To show you that even in a better way, let me just quickly jump back to my website again because this is an inc absolutely incredible feature. And I'm going to take a page that's really got a lot of scrolling in it, and that is Russell's five minute blog where I have lots of just quick videos about different technologies. If I opened up Snagit now and again did capture with scrolling window, again it's going to show me, look at, watch this, it's going to begin to scroll right through that page. Okay, which is obviously a very long page, probably too long really, but uh, it's just simply the way that the blog works. And that will now be brought into Snagit as an image. Now, the great thing about Snagit as well is that you can resize images immediately. So there it is, that image completely brought in. You can see it's only 10% of size. The first thing I could do though is to click here and just resize that image and make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to set that down to, say, for example, to 1,000, click on Apply, and now the image is, is made a bit smaller. Now, you can't really notice it on the screen because we're only zooming at 20%. Uh, so if I went to actual size, you'd see it's a lot bigger, but I could scroll through it. 
Okay, so I could resize the image and make it smaller, then put it into a website, I'll put it into my blog, etc. But the ability to be able to scroll an image is absolutely fantastic and something that you often don't find in image capture tools. Now I'm going to show you another feature in Snagit that I absolutely love. Just going to open up Snagit and this time I'm going to click and we're going to simply do region. I'm going to mark this area on the screen here. This really is a, a fantastic trick that we can now do in the latest version of Snagit. So let's say for example I've image captured that. But what I want to do now is actually delete a few things out of the image. So I'm going to click here and this time I'm going to go for selection. But watch this. Most of the time, if you select an area that you want to delete and you then just click on cut, what happens is you get a hole. One of the things that Snagit now allows you to do is to select something that you want to delete from your image. So I'm going to delete, for example, this title here. But what you can do is you can set it to autofill. And what's going to happen is it's going to use the color around the outside of this image and fill it in in there. And so if I click on cut now, bang, it cleans that object off the screen, but yet it still looks like an image and there's no hole in there. So that ability to autofill something that you cut out from the screen or from any image or from anything in terms of wanting to augment or change an image, then uh, adapt it, then you can do that so easily with Snagit with the latest version 2018. I really hope you found those videos useful. Please come to teachertrainingvideos.com. There's currently a special offer at the moment if you sign up to the newsletter. There are about 25,000 subscribers on the newsletter and I'm giving away some of my premium videos which normally cost uh, to sign up to but I'm actually giving them away free at the moment if you sign up to the newsletter just to give you a taster of what the premium videos are like. But if you don't want to sign up, you don't need to. All of the content on the website is completely free. There's a special section here on Snagit, and that might be really worth looking at how Snagit works with YouTube, a little bit more about image capture, how you can use the webcam facility in Snagit as well. Another section that you might be interested in, Russell's five minute blog, as I add lots of uh, really quick videos in there showing you key technologies and how we can use them in our teaching and learning. And the last thing, if you really wanna follow what I do, I do tend to add up even more content onto my YouTube channel. Really hope you found that video useful and thank you very much.